Hello guys, welcome back to another exciting series of Career Advice. So today we are going to learn about SAP FICA architecture. So in our earlier class, we learned the FICA basics and this is in continuation of our previous class where we learn SAP FICA architecture, why it is needed, its integration resources and there are some other topics like ledger, sub-ledger, e-commerce, billing, etc. And et so I hope you all will like this class, like our other classes. And we are getting a lot of emails from you guys asking a lot of questions. So keep doing that. And before we start, please do like, subscribe, share and comment in our chat. Thank you. Let's start. I'm trying to explain regarding these sub -ledgers. The sub need the contract account, CA, contract account, which is related to the individuals. Where are the general ledgers? Without general ledgers, the sub ledgers cannot be stand. So for general ledgers, we need company code. So under the, under the company code, we have the general ledger. Under general ledger, we have the sub ledgers. Right. And the summarization of the sub ledgers, we are creating the controlling accounts. That means to create the whole structure of these ledgers, first we need to create a company code a subsidiary company and the contract account. The contract account is part of SAP ISU. The company code is part of FICU. But in our uh, discussion, we'll create everything. We'll create the company code as well as the contract account and we'll link the ledger as well. Now, apart from sub ledgers, we have main ledger as well, okay? So as you know, the name is contract account receivable and payable. So SAP decide that why not we divide these ledgers into two parts. One part would be only for receiving, other part would be only for uh, paying, okay, payable. So one would be for the credit, one is for debit. So for the credit, that means the customers or anybody which uh, paying to the company, that would be the account receivable. Okay, and the debit part where we are, we need to pay, let it be, we need to pay to the <clears throat> generation units, we need to pay to the, uh, to the maintenance companies. So for them, we have account payable. So that means we divided the uh, ledgers into two <coughs> parts, two main ledgers, one is account receivable, other one is account payable. Under account receivable and payable, also we have sub ledgers. Each ledger is holding the details of the each individual. Those sub ledgers are related to the similar kind of characteristics. Example, uh, all the consumers who are <coughs> using energy as well as they are renting the meters. So now there are two services. So in case of main ledger, there will be account receivable sub ledger. Under that, we have two uh, sub ledgers one would be for rent of meters other one would be energy consumption okay now when we summarize that it will come to the main sub ledger and that main sub ledger link to the uh, your general ledger okay so that's how i'll explain in the schema label how the main ledger sub ledgers are linked to the main transaction and sub transaction and that link to the GL account. GL means general ledger account, which is, as I mentioned, is integrating everything. And that general ledger account is defined through all these details. Now, <coughs> there is a concept called journals, means again, uh, ledgers are books and journals also books. But journals is mostly useful for specific kind of stuff. Like, if there is any uh, correction we need to do, okay, for invoice, okay, in that case, we put them into a special journals, okay, and that special general also linked to the uh, general ledger at the end. So in, in uh, finance segment, we say that sundry books, okay, and finally, we make it as part of general ledger. In SAP, we call the special journals, okay? And that is linked to a specific transaction, specific uh, entries 
where we need to do corrections or we need to do some extra entries. So you can see providing the service on account, it is recorded under the special journal, we call them revenue journals. Receipt cash from any sources, we call the cash receipt journals. So journals mostly post the records. So at the cash desk, if somebody is paying money, so you need to pay the receipt. So, and you need to put the number, how much money is coming and based on which receipt. So those are special journals. Those are just entries. Purchase of items on account, purchase journal, payment of cash, any payment cash, that is cash journal. So all these type are different. One is cash journal, purchase journal, receipt journal, revenue journal. Now these books are again going to be merged under general ledger through the sub ledgers and we'll finally get the uh, uh, final output. So in balance sheet, mostly we have two parts. One is credit and debit and both these segments need to be balanced out through these book entries. Now uh, we can go back to the main ledger where you can find the main ledger actually divided into two parts account receivable and account payable now why we did this why we create two uh, main ledgers account receivable and payable because that will create a clear differentiation between the credit and debit now some of the companies what they do and that is the practical example i'm giving what they do at the end of the month, they close the uh, the receivable part. Why they close that? Because they have to apply some policies like late payment surcharges, like uh, uh, some extra uh, surcharges because of the okay uh, inability of payment. So what they do? They stop the account receivable at a certain point in a month, mostly at the end of the month or uh, after two months, they have the monthly activities in FICA, so they stop that. Okay, but they allow for account payable. Let it be they allow to purchase the goods, they allow to purchase the meters, the cables, other stuff. In that case, they open the account payable, but they stop the account receivable to apply the policies. Right. In that case, these two different main uh, subsidiary ledgers will be useful. Account receivable and account payable will be different. So maybe during your testing, you used one T code that is called OB52, which will allow you to open the uh, year. Okay, when the year ends, it will stop the account receivable and payable. So you, even if you post the invoice, it will not allow to receive the money. Okay, so what we need to do, we have some yearly maintenance plan uh, for FICA. So they need to go to the OB52, they open the uh, years for which they need to be uh, able to receive the money and they close the years which they think it is already over. In that case, this account receivable main subledger and account payable main subledger will be useful. Uh, yeah. uh, we have e-commerce sites Okay, e-commerce sites like your banks are kind of e-commerce sites. What they do, they're asking to the consumer to pay through ICICI uh, credit card or ICIC debit card, the utility payments. Okay, so they can also pay. Okay, now this transaction, e-commerce transaction is of two types. B2C, business to consumer. Business to consumer means if we are providing, like uh, in Europe these days, the um, companies are giving subsidies to the customers, uh, consumers. Okay, they are giving uh, 200 euros for every three months because the gas prices is very high here in Europe. So they are paying back to the consumer, business to consumer. And similarly, the companies B2B, business to business, uh, is happening. Like as I give example, the ICIC bank is asking to the customers, okay, pay, pay, pay through our uh, gateway. They paid, but it will be finally settled between ICIC bank and the, let it be NTPC. Okay. And all this thing 
also now integrated to the SAP solutions called supply chain management, customer relationship management, product life cycle. Everywhere the internet is integrated and they are giving the updates of these transactions. Otherwise, people raise a lot of queries. I paid a high, it is not happening, all those stuff. Okay, now these things need to be integrated with this stuff. Okay, but it is smooth. It is not creating any issues till now because everything is on computer, nothing physical. So it would be in real time as well. Now, if we introduce the whole process into FICA, okay? Like as I mentioned, we have CRM system integrated to FICA. We have SAP ISO system integrated to FICA. We have HD invoicing also integrated into FICA external system as well. Okay, so this is the central system which holds all these inputs. Okay, now once it will get all these inputs, it will also communicate between. Now the CRM system also get the information from FIC when it is receiving the money. Okay, that way, okay, we receive that. FI general ledgers, they have to be updated with the FIC postings. The controlling, the summarized details need to be done at the same time. And as well as the business intelligence, the Bob J reporting need to be extracted because the decision maker need to be take the decisions, right? So everything need to be very quick and fast because of SAP system. That's how people always go for SAP FIC system or mostly uh, SAP FICA system in high base consumers. Now, when I'm saying high base consumers, who all are the central objects? The central objects are business partner, the contract account, and the contract. And finally, the documents and items. Okay. So we'll discuss in details in our next segment regarding the business partner, contract account, and contract. For the time, I can say the business partner is a, a, the person who is getting the services and he's a re, legal representation of a uh, consumer. Now, why, why I'm saying legal representation? Because if a business partner need to be linked to a utility company, they have to give their ID proofs, the details. Without that, uh, we can't create the business partner. Okay, they may exist, but if they don't have the legal documents, they are not integrated to the system. So business partner is the legal entity or the consumer for the customer. And that business partner is linked to the, uh, to the communications of uh, uh, communication of data, bank details. And if there will be any um, changes in the policies that need to be communicated to the business partner. So we call them the business relationship is conducted with business partners. Okay, whereas contract account is a logical unit which linked to the business partner. It contains control data. Control data means like which method they need to pay by direct debit, direct credit, cash, check, bank transactions, all those stuff. That is payment methods. Term of payments and dunning procedures need to be defined. Now, terms of payment means um, We'll discuss in details terms of payment is within how many days they need to pay. Like if they'll get an invoice in, uh, in in the first day of the month, so they have to you know, pay the amount within 15 days, terms of payments, done in procedure. If they will not pay, what are the process? What are the warnings we need to send to the um, to the business partner? That is also need to be defined under contract account. Right now, this object also holds the contract accounts receivable and payable details. Okay, definitely because the contract account is linked to the GLs <clears throat> through these uh, different different controlling system, so that holds all the details of this person. That's how the contract account when come into picture, it will be very clearer for the businesses how to use 
the individual information for the business. It usually represents a group of contracts or industry division specific. Again, uh, like divisions are mostly related to the utility companies, but mostly in the contract account, we have a company code, which is actually link that person to a particular company. And that company is responsible to provide the services to that business partner. Okay. And finally, the contract. Contract is the agreement between the service provider and the business partner that they are okay with these policies. So you can see the relationship between business partner and contract account is one is to n. So one business partner may have n number of contract accounts. And the contract account <coughs> and the contract will also have one is to n relationship. So one contract account may have multiple contracts. Okay. Why it is happening like that? Because one single person may get services from different areas, right? Of different utilities. Like the person A may want a services for electricity, gas, telecom, water management, everything. And that is one uh, region that would be relation between one is to n. The second one is he may have multiple properties across across the cities or across the countries. In that case, also we need one is to n relations. So finally, you can see we have documents which actually holding all these details, and those documents are linking between the business partner details and the general ledger details. So this is general ledger. This part is FICO part, which is integrating to the FICA part through the documentation. Okay. And this documentation holding majorly core major stuff, which is your document number, which is actually linking. Like whenever we create an invoice, like open item, with that, we need to create a posting item also, posting document number that document number linked to this through the posting date and document type and the currency currency means like in india inr and the reconciliation key now this reconciliation key may generate automatically through the system but other stuff need to be configured and that linked to the general ledgers now the general ledgers is holding under a company code definitely it is holding under company code and the general account is linked through the main sub ledger accounting and a business partner cost center and amount. That means we need to configure this part, the business partner item part and the general ledger item part and integrate through the document numbers. And then only the whole process can move smoothly. Okay. So <clears throat> how it happens if we see from a broader perspective, so the document posting happened. So before that, that is FI uh, invoice. The invoice is created, document is posted, right? Now the FICA document is posted. We have a reconciliation key. So you can see the both the reconciliation keys are same. So mostly what happened that in the same day or from the same desk, when whatever the amount is posted, we consider under the same reconciliation key. So that will helpful to summarize the amount at the end of the day. So the reconciliation key, you can see under a single reconciliation key, we summarize everything and we generate a posting document. And that posting documents refer to the reconciliation key and posted under a document. And that will go to the general ledger. So that's how the cycle is happening. But apart from that cycle, we have many stuff under FICA which would be our agenda to learn. So the major, as I mentioned, document posting, then we have incoming payments, we have refunds, account maintenance, interest, how put the interest calculation, how to configure them, security deposit configuration, document reversal, return of the process, installment planning, dunning, deferral, and write-off. These are our agenda to learn throughout this process throughout our discussion in next uh, 40 hours, okay? So apart from this, there would be some more also, uh, uh, more concept we will also discuss. 
uh, which would not be part of this agenda, but as um, the FIC enhanced, so we need to go through that. That will be helpful in your uh, projects. So the component of ISS or the Internet Self Services also need a uh, integration to the system, to the FICS system, okay? Because it, it the ISS is responsible for many stuff like direct debit authorization, which is again directly linked to the FICA because the uh, money will come through the direct debit through the ISS and that hits that. Similarly, for, for payment, after the payment, the pay bill, the display bill, all those information need to be provided to the customer to understand the details. Other stuff is technical in nature, but those are impacting our FIC. Like uh, if somebody is moved in, that means the invoicing started. The That person is integrated to our company. Change bill address. Obviously, we need to communicate that details. So those things need to be updated into the system through the ISS and that need to be synchronized. Finally, why <clears throat> we are doing all this? Why SAP is doing all this stuff? What is their objective? Now, the objective of this new ledger system or the sub-ledger system or FIC system is standard, the standardizing the international accounting principle. So what is the international accounting principle? This is double entry system. <clears throat> That means one side would be credit, other side would be debit, and both need to be balanced out. So if there will be one open item, then only the receipt can be happen. So that is standardization of international accounting principle. Okay. Then quicker transaction to close the period. Whenever you close the period quickly, you always generate good amount of revenue. Like in utility segment, we always discuss in billions and millions. And if you get the money five days or 10 days before, uh, that means it will generate huge amount of interest, huge amount of revenue. Okay, so quicker transaction, quicker closing of the period means more money. Real-time reporting per company and industry specific. So real-time reporting always gives a decision edge, like, you are out of energy, you are out of water or you are out of gas, that you can understand. And then based on that, you can put your decisions and those decisions will impact the pricing. Those pricing impact the collection of the money. So those things need to be reported and specifically reported in real time. So the decision will be quicker, faster, and it will impact less to the customers. And because of this reporting, quicker transaction, uh, yearly closing, and all these principles, the cost reduction will happen. That will helpful to the consumer because we'll provide them some benefits, okay, some discounts. So cost reduction will happen. And finally, the data transparency will happen. The consumer can go into the uh, portal. They can see what is their consumption, how much they paid, what would be the future invoice amount, all those details will come and when he need to pay, how he need to pay. So all these things will be transparent. So the business will be more smoother. And financially, greater convergence between finance. Now, convergence is a very complex thing, but with FICA, it is easier. Now, if somebody is staying in UK and he need to pay uh, the money in India, right? So that it be, I need to pay some utility bill in India. In uh, probably in 15 years back, I can't do that. But currently, yes, I can. I can do that because of the convergence between the finances. Okay, that means I can pay in, in euros. And that need to be linked to the uh, customer. Uh, through rupees, okay? 